Alright, so in this example, we are asked to find the last two digits of this monster over here. 7 to the power 7 to the power 7 to the power 7. So, the last two digits um, of any number is basically what remains if you divide by 100. The last two digits of 1004 is 0, 04. That's the remainder after division by 100. So that's what we want to do. We want to divide this number by 100. And we're not really interested in how many times 100 goes in. We're only interested in the remainder after we divide by 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reformulate this as saying, well, I want to solve the following congruence. I want a number x that is congruent to this number modulo 100. But of course there's infinitely many x's which satisfy this congruence. This thing itself satisfies this congruence. So I'm interested in the x, the unique one, which is the remainder after division by 100. So I have to constrain this further and say, okay, this x needs to lie between 0, because 100 could go in exactly, or, uh, and it must be strictly less than 100. Okay. Now, to solve this congruence, um, I'm going to start looking at the powers of 7. And I'm going to see maybe there's a nice, um, a nice pattern if I look at the successive powers of 7 modulo 100. Or maybe I can find a power of 7 that is particularly easy to work with modulo 100. So, I start looking at these things. I say, okay, 7 to the power 1, well... That's just congruent to 7 modulo 100. It doesn't really reduce to anything easier. 7 to the power 2, well, that's 49. That's just congruent to 49 modulo 100. I could add and subtract multiples of 100 to 49. And of course, that would give me other things congruent to this modulo 100. But you can try and you can see it's not really going to work very well. Now, um, 7 to the power 3, let's check that. If you don't remember that, you can use your calculator. 7 to the power 3, it's going to go as 3, 4, 3. 7 to the power 3, 3, 4, well, it's equal to 3, 4, 3, which is congruent to 43 modulo 100. Okay, well, 43, 49, 7, nothing is really looking very uh, promising so at the moment. We can't really see a pattern emerging yet. Let's try 7 to the power 4. Ha! Huh. So 7 to the power 4 is equal to 2401. And now we strike the jackpot because modulo 100, this thing is just congruent to 0. If I divide by 100, the remainder is 0. So this thing is congruent to 1, modulo 100. And any power of 1 is, of course, extremely easy to work out. It's just 1 again. So I want to exploit this fact to try and solve this congruence over here. So what I want to do is I want to say, well, suppose I could write this 7 to the 7 to the 7 as something times, um, uh, something times 4 plus the remainder. I can do that with any number. So suppose 4 goes in x times. Uh, let's say it goes in z times and leaves the remainder of y. Okay. If I could do this, this, well, I've just rewritten that. That would be congruent to x modulo 100. Then I could say, look, this is 7 to the 4 all to the z times 7 to the y. I've just used my laws of exponents over there. And now this, well this thing is congruent to 1, modulo 100. Our properties of congruences tell us that in I can replace in powers congruence with congruence and in products I can replace congruence with congruence and what I'll get will be congruence. So this will give me 7 uh, this, will, well, this, in fact, will give me 1 to the power z times 7 to the power y, and that will stay congruent to x modulo 100. 
and 1 to any power is just 1, so this will reduce to 7 to the y, which would be congruent to x modulo 100. Alright, so, then, this is, and this is looking much, much better, okay, because particularly y here, what have I done here? I've divided this exponential tower, 7 to the 7 to the 7, by 4, and I expressed it like this. 4 went in z times and left a remainder of y. So y over here is going to be something between 0 and 3. So that's very easy. If I can get, find this y, this congruence is going to be very easy to solve, much easier than the one we started out with. So what I need to do is I need to find this y. So what have I done here? I wanted here 7 to the 7 to the 7. Notice I'm only taking the exponent here. I wanted to write this thing as something times 4 plus y. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the remainder if I divide this thing by 4. So I'm looking to solve this congruence. And of course again where y is the number congruent to this thing modulo 4 which is the remainder of the division of this number by 4. So particularly it needs to lie between the bounds 0 and strictly less than 4. Alright, so notice here we're, we're apparently changing base here. I was working modulo 100 here and now I'm working modulo 4. The point of working modulo 100 here is that I want the last two digits of this thing, so the remainder of this thing after division by 100. To do that I noticed that, well, if I could rewrite the exponent part of this as something times 4 plus y, where y is the remainder after division by 4, then this would all reduce to that. So now I'm working to try and find that y, which I can then plug back in there. So this, I'm, I'm finding a remainder after division by 4. That's my y. And this is why I'm now solving a different congruence, and this congruence modulo 4. All right, so let's see. Now I'm again going to start, I'm going to look at powers of 7 modulo 4 and see if I see a pattern or something that works particularly easily. All right, so I'm going to say 7 to the power 1, well, that's just congruent to, um, uh, to 1. Ah, just congruent to 7 mod 4. It's also congruent to 3 mod 4, it's also congruent to minus 1 mod 4. Okay, so yes, look at this, 7 is congruent to minus 1 mod 4, right? Because if I take 7, I can subtract 4, it gives me 3, so it's something congruent mod 4. From 3, I can subtract another one, another th 4, which gives me something congruent mod 4, even minus 1. Now any power of minus 1 is very easy to work with. So this guy is in fact, this is minus 1 to the 7 to the 7 would be congruent to y mod 4. Alright, now what is this? This is a odd power because I've got 7 multiplied with itself s uh, 7 times. This is going to be an odd number, so this is going to give me minus 1. Not 4. Okay, now, of course, this is not, this doesn't satisfy this, so I need to work back to something within that range, which is congruent mod 4. I can add 4 here, which is going to give me 3. Okay, so particularly I can take y to be equal to 3. Okay, this means if I divide this exponent by 4, the remainder is going to be 3. So I can take it back here and say, well, this means 7 to the 3 is congruent to x modulo 100. We've already looked at 7 to the 3. 7 to the 3 is just 43. Ach, 43 is congruent to x 
modulo 100 and 43 falls within the bounds that we're interested in. So we conclude that the last two digits of 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7 are 43 or 43.